This is our first look at the cardiovascular system. So let's start with the functions. The functions of the cardiovascular system are primarily to move blood through the arteries. The way that our bodies does that is through the use of the heart. The human heart acts like a pump. It's made up of specialized tissue called cardiac muscle. And that tissue is extremely strong, extremely thick, and extremely powerful. So it can move blood very rapidly and at pretty high speeds through all of the vessels of the body. So the cardiovascular system is made up of the heart and then all of its associated vessels. It's divided into, or the not the heart, but the way that blood is delivered is divided into two different circuits. The first circuit is the pulmonary circuit. Pulmonary means lung. So the pulmonary circuit delivers blood to the lungs and then back to the heart. The purpose of that is to drop off carbon dioxide, which is a gas that we produce as a waste product, and to pick up oxygen so that it can be used by the rest of the body. The other circuit is the systemic circuit. Systemic means body. And so this circuit delivers blood from the heart to the body and then back to the heart. The purpose of that circuit is to deliver the oxygen to muscles and other tissues that need it for metabolism and to pick up waste products and take them away. So the human heart lies in the pretty much dead center of the chest cavity. If you look at this image down here, the heart in this picture is the kind of um, orange colored structure. Most people think of the heart as being on the left side of the chest and that's just not true. It's basically at the center of the chest but it is tilted slightly to the left um, which is kind of the only uh, distinguishing feature between the two sides. Um, the heart lies directly behind the sternum which you'll remember is that large flat bone that sits right here at the center of the rib cage and it is protected on the back side by the spinal cord and spinal column, and then on the sides by the rib cage. So it's protected pretty well inside the thoracic cavity. Around the heart is another protective structure called the pericardium. So remember peri, like perimeter. Peri means around, and card means heart. And so the pericardium is a um, membrane that is really thick and it attaches in four different locations. So at the bottom of the thoracic cavity is a muscle called the diaphragm that's shaped basically like that and that muscle helps to open and close the lungs and open and close the chest cavity. So the pericardium attaches at the bottom to the diaphragm. It attaches at the front to the sternum and at the back to the spinal column, and then there are a bunch of blood vessels. Inside the pericardium, between the pericardium wall or membrane and the heart itself, is fluid called pericardial fluid. That fluid helps to um, provide a little bit of uh, kind of slip and slide. It keeps the heart from rubbing up against the rib cage and uh, the lungs and that way it protects it from friction and other damage. The very outermost layer of the heart itself is a layer called the epicardium and we will talk about that more in the next slide. So the epicardium again is the outermost layer. Epi means outer or around as well. And the epicardium is primarily connective tissue, and part of that connective tissue is fat, or adipose. Remember that adipose just means fat. That provides cushioning for the heart. It provides some uh, warmth for the heart, which helps to keep the muscle working better if it stays warm. Uh, the middle layer, so if you look at this picture down here, the epicardium is this really thin, I don't know if I can get it, well, that's a terrible, terrible drawing. Um, it is this very thin little layer right there. There you go. That would be the epicardium. That really thick um, red layer right here is the middle layer, which is called the myocardium. Myo means muscle, 
So this layer is primarily made up of cardiac muscle tissue. You can see how thick it is and how dense it is. There's also a really good blood supply and really good nerve supply so that the brain can um, communicate with the heart and tell it when to speed up or slow down and things of that nature. And that muscle is what is primarily responsible for the pumping action, the movement of blood. The innermost layer you can see is really, really thin. It's right here. That is called the endocardium. So endo means in. It's the innermost layer of heart tissue. It is made up of a little bit of connective tissue and epithelial tissue. Remember, we talked about epithelial tissue when we first talked about skin. And it is, epithelial tissue tends to be pretty smooth, so it provides a really easy pathway for blood to be moved through the heart if it's nice and smooth. The heart itself is divided into four chambers, and we talk about those chambers in terms of top and bottom, or left and right. So the upper two, the top two chambers, we see right here, we have the right atrium and the left atrium. So the atria, atria is one. So like the left atri, or pardon me, atria is two. Atrium, like you see here, is one. So you have two atria, and they are on the left and they are on the right. Um, the lower two chambers are called the ventricles. Again, a right ventricle and a left ventricle. You can see that this heart is labeled right and left as though it were in the person's body, right? So when you look at the heart, the right atrium is actually on your left field of view, but we always talk about the heart in terms of if it was in a body. So the left and right appear to be backwards. Um, the interesting thing about the right and left sides of the hearts is they are similar in structure, but not entirely the same. The right side of the heart tends to be much thinner because it primarily delivers blood to the lungs. And the lungs are really, really close by the heart, so it doesn't take as much power. The left side of the heart tends to be very thick-walled. You can see that in this picture, right? The wall here is a lot thicker. And it is because the blood is being pumped to the body, so there's a lot more distance being covered there. Down the center, the heart is divided, or the two sides of the heart are divided by this thick wall called the septum that keeps um, the blood on the right and the blood on the left separated from one another. Okay, so another separation point between the chambers is a separation between the upper and lower chambers. So the atria are divided from the ventricles by these little structures called valves. And the way that those valves look, you can see here, if we cut the heart open and looked at it from above, this is what the valves look like. So they basically act like swinging doors. On the right side of the heart, we have a valve called the tricuspid, which you can see here. And on the left side, we have a valve that's either called the bicuspid or the mitral valve. It just depends on the text, but they're the same structure. And the way that those work is they swing open. So if we look at this from the side here, the valve opens. That picture doesn't really work. I need a different color, I think. As blood is moving from the top chamber into the bottom chamber, we need these valves to open up. So they basically open like that, blood moves through, and then when the blood has made it into the ventricle, those valves close back up and they sit closed until the next time blood needs to move. That kind of regulates the flow of blood and allows the heart to pump as powerfully as it can. Um, there is another set of valves that is at the end of the ventricles before blood actually leaves the heart. So here we have the pulmonary valve, which is on the right, you can see it there, and we have the aortic valve, which is on the left, and those valves work in exactly the same way. As blood is moving out of the ventricles, the valves open so that blood can leave, and then when the blood is gone from the ventricles, the valves shut again and wait for the next time that blood is moving through. 
So here's a bigger picture of the heart. And again, this is if we cut the heart in half and now we're looking at it from the front. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how blood flow moves through the heart. So we've got these, all of these veins. Hello, pen. My pen is not working. Okay, everywhere you see veins and vena cava, vena means vein. Anywhere you see those terms, that is carrying blood coming back from somewhere either in the body or in the lungs. So see, pulmonary veins from lungs, pulmonary veins from lungs. The vena cava are coming back from the body. So blood is entering the heart either on the right side or on the left side. And so blood comes into the heart in both of those places. Let's see, I can draw an arrow in here. There we go. And so let's start with movement on the right side. So if we have blood coming in the right side of the heart, it first goes into the right atria, which is what you see here. That's what RA stands for. Blood fills up the right atria. And when it gets full, these, the valve here, the tricuspid valve, opens so that blood can move into the ventricle. As the ventricle fills up, then the heart pumps, and now blood leaves and goes to the lungs. This is all part of the pulmonary circuit, right? From the heart to the lungs. Blood goes to the lungs, it gets oxygen, and then it comes back to the left side of the heart. So I'm going to use yellow here. So it comes into the left atria right there. It fills up and then opens the valve down into the left ventricle. As the left ventricle fills up, then blood is pumped out of the left ventricle and to the body. That makes the left side of the heart an important part of the systemic circuit. This pathway of blood, that flow and the different structures is extremely important and you will be expected to know how that works. So what about the heart itself? We keep talking about blood going to the body or blood going to the lungs. The heart itself also needs to get blood flow because it really needs oxygen in order for the muscles to work and it needs to make sure that waste is constantly being taken away so that the heart doesn't fill up with waste products. The way that that works is the aorta is the main vessel that goes to the body. Just after it fills with blood from the heart, there are two little branches that come off and they are for arteries or vessels that go right around the heart. You can see them down here. Here's the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. So those feed the right and the left sides of the heart. That means that the heart gets oxygen rich blood right away and it's being constantly supplied with really good oxygen rich blood straight from the lungs. There are veins that run alongside, they're not shown in this picture, but there are veins that run alongside those arteries that then bring the blood back once it has dropped off oxygen to the heart, the blood goes into the veins and it goes straight back to the right side of the heart so that it can be delivered to the lungs for more oxygen. So something that's really important to remember when you're talking about the cardiovascular system, and there are lots of terms that start with V in the cardiovascular system and lots that start with A, so it's kind of um, a, a little bit of a trick to keep them straight. One way that you can remember is that arteries always take blood away from the heart. So A for artery, A for away. So in this picture, arteries are these big, huge red blood vessels. So they're going away from the heart. Let's imagine that the heart is right here. Um, as they get further from the heart, they branch into smaller structures called arterioles, which would be right here. As they get even further, we get to places like the tip of the nose and the tips of the fingers and into the feet. Those vessels get even smaller and they become capillaries, which you can see in this picture there, right? Kind of the purplish um, structures in the middle. Capillaries deliver oxygen and water and nutrients to cells. They pick up waste products and then they drain into larger structures called venules 
and the venules eventually all dump into very large veins called the vena cava at the very, very end. And that delivers blood straight back to the heart. So veins go to the heart, arteries go away from the heart. Here are your guiding questions for writing your summary. Try to write them as much as possible from what you remember. Make sure that you have all of the information that they um, cover in your notes. If not, feel free to go back and add in some info. Remember, too, to bring two to three discussion questions for the next class. I'll see you then.